Turn to uh, go ahead and turn to Second Timothy, chapter one. Uh, I had a couple different things uh, on my mind this week, and uh, actually been on my mind for a while. And this right here been on my mind for a long time, for a couple months. And uh, I guess I don't know. I try to just listen and pray about what to do on Sunday mornings and see my like this was it. And, uh, sometimes I get in a place where I don't know what to do or what to read. And, uh, I like to have it just plain and clear out in front of me. Uh, but I sort of tore this week between two different things. But I, don't, I believe this is what I'm supposed to read this morning. I got maybe three places I want to read, and they may be a whole lot of reading. Uh, but I hope this will help. Uh, I sit here just to think a minute ago just what to say or what to tell you this morning. The only thing I know is maybe this will help us. Is, 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 uh, I don't know how long you've been in this thing, how long you've been saved, or how long you've been a Christian, or whatever, but. Uh, seem like the things that's been said, the things that's been preached on. Uh, it is getting worse and worse out here in the world, and, and, and as we go on, I, I believe it'll just get that much worse. But uh, I, I believe this will help us all, no matter what uh, what position you in this morning. But I, I said I'd rather just read this morning, and, and maybe this will help somebody. But in Second Timothy, chapter one. And uh, starting in verse 8, got just a few verses. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, 2 Timothy 1 and verse 8 says, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partakers of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but, not, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death, who hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an, and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles, for the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, I, I, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus, that good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. Now, I'll stop right there because it's hard to go on and not read it all, but... but but I, I, I read these scriptures, like I say, it's been a good month or two months ago. Uh, uh, just uh, I marked it and kept it marked and wrote it down and, and went back this week. Some things on my mind, uh, like I said, back and forth between some things. But, 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 but uh, just to read that little bit right there and, and what is it saying? It, 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 verse 12 is one thing that stuck out in my mind for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus uh, uh, the only thing like I said I, I thought a whole lot this week and the things that's been preached and, and things that I face and the things I talk to other people that that they face and talking to people. I, I want to just start out and say uh, one thing that came to my mind uh, a couple of weeks ago of thinking about these same scriptures and what I'm fixing to read. Uh, 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 you know, I, I don't have a, a hard time with, with, with lost people that know they're lost. I, I, uh, talking to lost people that know they're lost, you won't have a hard time. Uh, they, they'll sort of generally listen to you or just tell you to go on about your business. Uh, that you. you uh, I hope that makes sense to somebody. The, the, the ones you'll have a hard time with is the ones that, that claim to be something and they ain't. Yeah, that's the ones you'll have to struggle with. That's the ones you'll have problems 
ones with. The, the ones that's been in church all their life and not been saved. The ones that, 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 that read half of a verse and, and think they know it all. That's the ones you'll have problems with. And, 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 and I believe uh, that that's, uh, you can go on to read the rest of this, but, but uh, I want to go to another book here in a minute. But it's important for you to know uh, uh, in whom you believe. It's important to know that you... Uh, that you hold fast to sound words and sound doctrine. It, 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 it's an important thing. That's not in here for no reason. It, 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 uh, I, I, I like to think of myself, I, I, I don't know it all. I don't claim to know this book. And I hope I ain't never come across as knowing this whole book. But I, I, I do, I, I, what I do know, I know. What I know, I believe. Come on. Uh, I have no problem with that. If somebody wants to talk to me about something I, I, that I know, I know, I'll talk to them. If they're wrong, they're wrong, because I know I'm right. You see, that that's holding fast to the form of sound words, which is this book. It's sound. There's no there, when something's sound, it's solid. You see, you, you need to you need to have a belief in something this morning that's solid. And the difference is between you and somebody else, the ones that that, that, that claim to be something, and I'll just go ahead and say that the hypocrites of the world, the religious people of the world, they're not sound. They don't have a sound doctrine. You say, and, and, and you say, well, what's this? What's this about? I want you to turn over the book of Jude, uh, the verse that really got all this on my mind over here in the book of Jude. Uh, <coughs> Jude can be hard to find. This right after First John, First, Second, and Third John, right before, right before Revelation. It's, you can find Revelation, you can find you. Uh, book of Jude, verse... Uh, Let's just start in verse 1. I'll just read it all. Like I said, I just want, I'm not, I'd rather read this morning. Jude, verse 1 says, Jude, the servant of our Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called mercy to you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not, and the angels which kept not their first estate, but, their own, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of, the, of eternal fire. Likewise, also, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuked thee. But they speak evil of those things which they know not, but, but what they know naturally is brute beasts, and those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward and perish in the gainsaying of Kor. These are, these are spots in your feast of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Raging waves of the sea, falling out of their own shame, wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness and of darkness forever. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of thee, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment upon all, 
and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murderers, complainers, walking after their own lust, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit. But ye, but ye, beloved, building up yourselves in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And if some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Amen. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and uh, present you faultless before the presence <coughs> of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and ever. Amen. Now, uh, that, that's all they are. And I know the, the really a whole lot of times uh, I, I go to the book of Jude sometimes to, to, to read, but uh, I, I marked the verse 3 a long time ago that's been preached on and, and, and taught on. And, uh, and whether uh, maybe you ain't never heard it read before, but verse 3, uh, he, he starts out the whole thing with the Greek and then says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was enabled for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Now it goes on after that and lists all this of the, uh, uh, the certain men crept in unaware. That, uh, that there's a reason, he, uh, that's what he's saying, there's a reason you should earnestly contend for the faith. Uh, and he goes on and lists all that about the, the, the men are creeping in and the ones that's out for themselves. Uh, it's, all, uh, it's all hypocritical type people. It's the ones you hear about in the churches. It, it's even some of the ones... I know some of this, that, that, that falls in these categories. I, I know some... So some uh, people that claim to be Christians or preachers or, or whatever, Sunday school teachers and things that, 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 that fall into this. But what he's saying is you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the faith, uh, in, unto the saints. Now contending, uh, if you think about contending, I always thought about fighting. If you're going to contend, you're going to have to fight. And, and, and looking it up, and I looked it up a long time ago. And, and contending, if you look it up, the dictionary means a whole lot of things. But one thing I wrote down in particular on, says to compete with a good chance of winning. Yeah. You see, if you don't hold fast to sound doctrine, if you don't know what you believe in, you can't contend for the faith. Come on. Uh, when these hypocritical people, and I, I, I have, I, for the last year or so, it seems like people want to come ask me some of the stupidest questions, and they're all they're wanting to do is try to trip me up. I know from the get go what they're trying to do. If you don't know enough of this book and you don't believe it enough, you, you're gonna, you ain't going to look like you're too sound in what you believe. Uh, you're not going to be able to contend for the faith if you don't know what to say to them. And you say, well, uh, you know, I don't know what they're going to come at. How am I supposed to know? I promise you, if you read this book and you study and live your life by it, uh, God will give you exactly what you need to say. It will come to your mind. Amen. Uh, but but you, you ain't going to be able to do that if you don't know. So you can't con he says, and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which is worth delivered unto the saints. It's an it's a earnest to walk to. I, I don't want to argue. And I ain't a saying go and be I won't read something here in a minute. Let me go ahead and say this before I read it. I ain't a saying be mean to these people. Amen. I ain't a saying if you think they're hypocrites, get up in their face and try to prove them wrong. Hey, you ain't going to do a bit of good doing that. You won't do nothing by doing that. What I'm saying is, it, what, I, what the Bible's is saying is to earnestly contend for the faith. That means you're going to have to fight for what you believe in. And you won't necessarily have to. I don't believe, now myself, in my experiences, I never had to fight with the lost person what they believe. 
And they'll ask stuff and want to know where it's at. And generally, if God's a deal with them, they'll listen to them. But it's the ones that, that, that listen to what man said. It's the ones that uh, only crack this book open on Sunday morning and believe everything that comes out of the pulpit instead of reading it for themselves. It, it's the ones that believe what Grandpa told them because Grandpa went to this certain church. It, it's the ones that believe what... Uh, what so and so believes because they've been friends with them for years Come on. That, that's not earnestly contending for the faith, that's not holding fast to sound words, that, that's not knowing in who you Come believe that, that, that's, that's, right. that's going along with what, the, this list of people he's talking about over here it's an earnest contention. It means really a trying to fight for the faith it, it's going against these letters that come home from the middle school Come on. you see it's believing in this stuff and saying well that ain't right Come on. If you know it ain't right, I, I, I'll just throw this in there, and I don't mean it for a joke, but I'm on, this is the best example I can give you, and it just comes to my mind and sit here. I, I like driving a Ford vehicle, Jeff. I believe him. I, I, I've driven them all my life. I like them. That's what I believe in, Jeff, or Barney, or anybody else is going to change my mind. That's what I believe. <laughs> now, you want to look at the gospel the same way. If you believe this gospel the same way, just like we do this earthly stuff, you'll be earnestly contending. I'd earnestly contend for the things of this earth I believe in. Why not the gospel? Why not what you believe spiritually? Why not these things? Come on, brother. Are we afraid of man? I. I believe that's nine times out of ten the biggest problem. We're afraid of what somebody's going to think. Honestly, and I got to thinking about it. There's something come to my mind, uh, like I said a couple of weeks ago, we're thinking about all this. and I went back to thinking about Jesus and, the way, and, and, and all the Gospels and throughout the Bible and the way He was a, a talked to people, dealt with people. And you go back, and I got to, it really come to my mind strongly. When Jesus dealt with the sinners, He didn't talk man to them. No. He went over and he went above and beyond what anybody else would do for the sinners to talk to them and to try to help them and to tell them what he came for and to tell them about a better life. Surely, if you've ever read the Gospels, you pick that out. And if you compare that to the way he talked to the Pharisees, Rex, and the religious crowd, you may have to think this is wrong, but I'm just going to say it. He wasn't too nice to them people. He told them what he told them what the book said, what he thought, what he was there for. And I, uh, I I got quite a bit of reading. I want us all to go over to uh, the book of Mark, and I want to read this, and you just listen right here, and and, and, and uh, just remember what the Pharisees and the and the and the Jewish leaders of that day what they was and. and, and It'd be just like you, you, uh, you big TV preachers, you mega church preachers, you, you people that uh, had the had the crowds fooled, uh, uh, the, the the ones that it'd be like modern day. Then, then. it'd be like uh, uh, the ones that uh, I don't know. Just the, the I always think the TV preachers for some reason because they got such big churches and they tell such junk and all them people sit there and believe it. And I always thought, man, won't somebody just stand up and tell them that's wrong? That ain't what the Bible said. Nobody does. But right here in Mark chapter 11, I'm going to read, you You just listen. We'll go through this maybe slow. I'm going to read this and you listen. Mark chapter 11, verse 27. <clears throat> Mark 11 and verse 27 says, And they come again to Jerusalem, and he was walking in the temple. There come to him the chief priests and the scribes and the elders, and say, say unto him, By what authority dost thou these things? And who gave thee this authority to do these things? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I will also ask of you one question, and answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? Answer me. And they reason with themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, he will say, Why then do ye not believe me? Do ye not believe him? But if we shall say of men, they feared the people, for all men counted John that he was a prophet indeed. And they answered and said unto Jesus, We cannot tell. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Neither do I tell you by what authority I do these things. Come on. And he began to speak unto them by parables. A certain man planted a vineyard, said it. 
hedge about it and digged a place for the wine fat and built a tower and laid it out to the husbandman and went into a far country. And at the season he sent to the husbandman a servant that he might receive from the husband the, of the fruit of the vineyard. And they called him and beat him and sent him away empty. And again he sent unto them another servant and at, and at him they cast stones and wounded him in the head and sent him away shamefully hand, handled. And again he sent another, and him they killed, and many others, beating some and killing some, having yet therefore one son, his well beloved, he sent him also the he sent him also last unto them, saying, They will reverence my son. But those husbandmen that said among themselves, This is the heir, come, let us kill him, and the inheritance shall be shall be ours. And they took him and killed him and cast him out in the vineyard. What, there, what shall therefore the Lord of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the husbandman and will give the vineyard unto others. And have, and have ye not read this scripture? The stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. Yeah. This was the Lord's door and, is, and, is, and it is marvelous in our eyes. And they sought to lay hold on him, but they feared the people, for they knew that he had spoken the parable against them. And they left him and went their way. And and they sent unto him certain of the Pharisees and of uh, the Herodians to catch him in his words. And when they were come, they say unto him, Master, we know, we know that thou art true and carest for no man, for thou regardest not the persons of men, but teachest the way of God is true. Is it lawful to give tribute to, to Caesar or not? Shall we give or shall we not give? But he, know their hypocrisy, said unto them, Why tempt ye me? Bring me a penny that I may see it. And they brought it, and he said unto them, Who's, who's is the, Who is this image and superscription? And they said unto him, Caesar's. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's, and they marveled at him. Then said they, Then come unto him the Sadducees, which say, they are, which say there is no resurrection. And they asked him, saying, Master, Moses wrote unto us, If a man's brother die, and leave his wife behind him, and leave no children, that his brother should take up his wife, and raise up seed unto his brother. Now there were seven brethren, and the first took a wife, and died, and left no seed, and the second took her, and died. Neither left he any seed, and the third likewise, and the seven had her and left no seed. Last of all, the woman died also. In the resurrection, therefore, when they shall rise, whose wife shall she be of them? For the seven had her to wife. And Jesus answered, said unto them, Do ye not, do ye not therefore err? Because ye know not the Scriptures, neither the power of God. For when they shall rise from the dead, they neither marry nor give it in marriage, but are as the angels which are in heaven, as touching the dead, that they rise. But have ye not read in the book of Moses how in the bush God spake unto them, saying, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. Ye therefore do err greatly. Do ye therefore do greatly err. And I'll stop right there. And you, uh, I, I want to read all that. There's different situations of these people coming to Jesus. And even uh, verse 13 says that they tried to catch Him in His Word. They, they, they just wanted to, to get Him to say something that, 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 that they, they could use against Him. And it'll work the same way today. If you don't know what you believe and you're not steadfast, it'll work the same way today. Somebody will, somebody will uh, catch you and uh, you are uh, trying to murmur and mumble around on, on what you've heard instead of what you believe and they'll use it against you Come on. to disprove your life and to disprove everything you think you believe. It, it, uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I'd say uh, later on you go on and read the rest of this and listen to the way Jesus handled them religious people. You see, what the, He didn't care what they believed. He, every time I ask him something, he, he just finally told me. It, 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 it goes right back to, to uh, what I was reading there, I believe it was in June, about Michael disputing with the devil over the body of Moses. He didn't, he didn't stand there and argue with me. He just said, the Lord rebuke, rebuke thee. He didn't have to stand there and argue. If you, it won't be argued. And you say, well, it sure sounds like you're wanting us to go argue with people. Well, I'm not. I'm just trying to help you be ready for when it does happen. Because if you start, the more you act 
the, the, well, not the more you act, the more you show people you're close to God and the closer you get to God and you start talking about these words in this book right here, I promise you they'll be starting to ask you questions. Amen. Wanting to know. Well, I thought it said this. I, I, I tell you, the first one thing for sure you'll hear, without a doubt, uh, they'll tell you, my preacher said this. Yeah. Every single time. I, I get sick of hearing that. I, 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 I got in a good conversation with a fellow here a while back believes in predestination. And, uh, we sat down, I don't know how long we talked, uh, for a long time. And I got to talk to that fellow. A uh, whole lot of stuff. It, 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 I don't know if you know people like that. I, I'm not saying nothing bad against people that believe that. It, it's not in the Bible the way they believe that you can... That, that, yeah, I'll just say this. I was talking to him, and, and, and the more we talked, the more uh, he, 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 he'd say, well, my, my preacher knows this. My, he knows where that's at. And, and I'd say, well, uh, if you know where it's at, well, we had a Bible right there. I said, let's look it up. Let's, let's do it. And, well, I, 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 I know, but he said, I, I just, I, I need to... I ain't read it in a long time, but he knows where it's at. And I had my phone, and I just looked up on my phone. It's pretty handy for stuff like that. And I said, this is scripture you are mean? He said, yeah, I'd see him, I'd see him. The ones that... I, said, I, I said, you need to go on and read. And I, I told him, and, and, and I, I knew enough of the scriptures to go and tell him where uh, whosoever will can be saved. Now, how Jesus came to, to, to save uh, the lost, and how... Uh, uh, just what was preached here this week and the drawing power of God is what will save you. That you don't just wake up and your feet hit the floor one day and decide you want to be saved. It, uh, something's got to touch you and move you and you've got to realize what kind of shape you're in. Anyway, it went on like that and I had to say this fellow was a hypocrite. That's just one small example. Uh, that was one of the better discussions I've had with people. You see, and it all comes back to earnestly contending for the faith and what you believe in. Now, if you don't believe it, don't worry about it. This ain't for you. We'll, we'll go on with service and your part will come here in a minute if you don't believe none of this. But if you believe in Scriptures, you need this. You need to understand this. It, 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 it's not coming a time. It, there's already been a time. We just yeah. ain't done nothing about it, you see. Come on. We should be earnestly contending uh, uh Years and years and years ago, but I wasted a lot of my time, a lot of my life, not contending for the faith. Uh, I, people would say things, and I can re I can remember my dad saying something, or the, the, the preacher of the church I used to go to was saying something. Yeah, that's right. You're right. That's what our preacher says that. My dad said that. I didn't have a clue. I didn't know. I didn't believe none of it. I just knew you're supposed to believe in something. But I didn't believe it either. I couldn't contend for the faith. You can't contend for the faith if you don't if you don't know what you believe and if it ain't sound words, you ain't you ain't gonna contend for nothing, let alone the faith of Jesus Christ. Uh, it's an important thing. Uh, like I say, just to just to know. I mean I, and I know this may be a combination of Sunday school classes we've had in the past, and I sort of figured it might would be once Come I got on. up here. But if, if, if you believe it, you'll live it. And if you're living it, you're going to suffer things. You're going to suffer things for what you believe. But that's where the contention comes in. It, 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 you know, I, I, I know it's been said before, and I'll say, ain't none of us ever been beat or ever been drug out somewhere for what we believe. Uh, you might suffer, uh, you know, you might lose a few friends and, and, and suffer some heartache and hurt feelings along the way, but that ain't nothing like being took out and stoned and beat to death because you told somebody you believe in Jesus. Now, you come to that point, you you go back to the apostles, the way they, they had to suffer for the cause of Christ. And, and, and uh, as soon as they mentioned they believed in Jesus, it, it, it was on. It, 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 it wasn't they was waiting on the corner uh, to grab them. They went after them to give them. They, they, they was earnestly contending for the faith then. And here we are, just uh, going right back to the last time, sitting around the aisle, not worried, not, you know, just sitting here. What we do next? When's the next? Maybe we'll come back uh, Wednesday night. This will be good, just sitting here. Uh, it, it, I, I can't help it anymore. Now, if I know something, and I'll go back, I just may be jumping around. I, if I know something in this book and I hear somebody say something that ain't right, 
told me I can't help it. I have to say, well, I'm pretty sure that ain't right. And yeah, you may hurt a lot of people's feelings, but if it ain't right, and, it, and you say, well, if it ain't concerning salvation, it probably ain't that important. This whole book is important. This whole book is salvation. Uh, it, 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 it. And I, like I say, I don't argue and I don't go picking fights with people, but if it, if it comes down to it, and I, they... That, and they and they going around telling people something in this book, and just because the preacher said it, just uh, just because they see it a certain way, if it ain't right, it ain't right. No matter what it is or who it is. Uh, that's one thing I sort of worried about when I started teaching this Sunday school class. I thought, well, I, I don't know enough. If I say something that's wrong, I don't I don't want to stand up here and teach something that ain't. That ain't right. I don't want to lead people astray. I don't want to uh, twist the scriptures. I want to be able to do it right. And then I got to think, well, I believe there's enough men in this church that stand up and tell me, wait a minute, that's not right. And uh, I hope you still would if it had. That wouldn't bother me a bit. I want to be right. I want to be right so I can earnestly contend for the faith. You see, it, it, to me, it's an important thing. Uh, I don't know. I thought about that. Like I said, you never read the word Jesus talked to the sinners quite like he did them Pharisees, because he knew what they was up to. Uh, you're gonna have hypocrites that come up to you up to try to just catch you up and trip you up in your own words and uh, try to make you doubt what you believe. And I tell you, I, I ain't doubted what I believe in a long, long, long time. I, I feel pretty sure that. Uh, I, I, well, I'll just tell you, I don't, I, I, I don't care to, and I have, and I will again to go toe to toe with a preacher if I have to on what I believe. I, I had to not too long ago. It wasn't, wasn't the funnest thing I ever done, but I tell you, once I, when it started coming, it started coming, and I felt pretty proud of myself, just to be honest with you, that I know enough of the scriptures to contend for the faith. I wasn't there. I, 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 I honestly felt like that's what I was doing was contending for the faith because what me and him was going back and forth on was, it was a, a pretty important I thought but I felt like I contended for the faith like I knew enough and I felt good and I thought well that's, that feels pretty good you know uh, just to be sure and, and to have uh, like I say have your faith in sound words you'll hear no sounder words of what gets preached and taught in this church I promise you that that's one good thing I, I think about it. David mentions it from time to time about us not using no literature uh, for Sunday school classes in this and or for the young ones. Uh, it, it, you know, they some of it I'm sure pretty good. Uh, there's nothing better than just getting it straight from the source. Uh, but I, I, that's, that's all I had to read. Like I say, I, I, it's been on my mind for a while and I... I if you'll remember too, I came to my mind reading this. I went back and found it on the internet a while back. Josh had preached a message on contending for the faith about three years ago in this church. Uh, I'd encourage you to go back and listen to it too. It was pretty good. It's, but uh, just knowing how, what, 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 what to do and, and how to do it and know the Scriptures and know what you believe in it. Ain't no more important time than they are right now. Uh, you know, if, uh, if, 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 if somebody, and you say, I don't know somebody that's probably never had to deal with nothing like that. Anybody come up to you asking you a question on what you believe or why you see it like this. You need to be ready to give an answer according to the Bible. You ought to have yourself in such a shape, prepared, ready to give an answer to these people. Uh, whether you can quote the scripture or not makes no difference. I promise you, it'll come to you. What you need, I do know that much. But I, I know that's pretty short. But that's uh, honestly, that's all I have. Anybody got anything they want to add? Jerry, that's good teaching. You know, the Bible says they have to form a fashion, but they have to deny the power of power of it. Amen. And a lot of times, they have the wrong way. That's right. <clears throat> They don't look to God. They look to their own life. They're self-righteous. You know, the Proverbs says there's a way to see the pride of the land and therefore the ends of the ways of David. Right. <coughs> they want to form their own 
for me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm wrong. Yeah, wrong. Never come to the right Jesus Christ. Yeah. But you know the sad part about it is I, I'm not going over Wednesday night yet. Bless the Lord. I, I can't get over. Yeah. The sad part about it is the Bible said in the last days that be evil men and seducers are waxing worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. There are millions of people in the, in America today and in the world today, and I'm not knocking people that are innocent in what they believe because they've been taught that way. Yeah. They don't know the difference. Yeah. Now, I can prove this by the Word of God. Uh, these brothers, uh, every time they read something, in the last little while, my mind just goes That's absolutely enough. wild. I can hear Scripture. These brothers can read out the Word of God and something will start rolling in my mind and the next thing I know that it just floods my mind. Yeah. But according to the Word of God, Apostle Paul was a religious man and yeah. when his name was Saul and, and he truly thought he was doing God's will right. by persecuting God's people and having them killed. He actually thought that that was the way it was supposed to be done because he was taught that way. Yeah, amen. The same ones that come to try to twist Jesus around was the ones that was giving Him letters to kill the church. And He did not know any better. That's right. He thought He's doing the will of God. He didn't know any better. Until that day that the voice come out of heaven and the light shined around him and God touched him when his eyes was open. The brother read it this morning. Right. Hey Amen. When the truth comes to you, praise God, there's no more covering for your sin. You know you're guilty and you become naked before God. Can I get an amen? amen. Come on. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And they'll never know the wrong till the truth comes. Right. Amen. Amen. And if you'll read it, though, in the Word of God, the men of God did not get any pleasure out of telling people they were wrong. There's no pleasure in it. Amen. Yeah. Matter of fact, it broke their heart to, to tell them that they'd been taught wrong all their life. Amen. But it still didn't change the truth, did it? That's right. Stephen. Yeah. The religious people stoned the man of God. And do you know why they killed Stephen? For one simple thing. Because Stephen spoke up and he said, if you would have known who he was, speaking of Christ Jesus, uh, you wouldn't have crucified him. Uh, they were best to know God and to be religious and have all this big to do yeah. for God. But yet they did not even know the Son of God. Amen. Come on! Yeah, right. And they killed the man that told them the truth. Yeah. But there's victory in his life, wasn't it? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The reward was greater Amen. than living in this world. Amen. For he saw Christ standing at the right hand of the Father. Amen. And praise God, I believe he stood up to welcome another yeah. child home. I believe that. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I thank God for what's being taught in this church. Yeah. Amen. This ain't hearsay. Yeah. It's the Word of God. That's right. This is Jesus. Amen. That's right. Amen. This is Jesus. Don't you understand that? This word that we carry is not just a book. Uh, yeah. This is Christ Jesus that we carry in our hand every Sunday. We handle the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ every day when we carry this Bible. Come on. Read first chapter of John. My God, go and read it. The word was flesh. Amen. Huh? The Word was with God. The Word was God. And oh, yeah. Lord God. I ain't going to get started on that. So praise God right here it is. Yeah. I don't understand. I don't understand a whole lot of things, but I do know that that if I'd have been brought up in church and some of this modern day stuff, and I might not be who I am today. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. Yeah. I might not be the person I am. I might be deceived this morning. Uh, amen. But I came into the house of God not knowing anything, not knowing how to pray, not knowing where, what the altar was, not even knowing what they call the benches you sat on. Nothing. Bless him, Lord. But I do know that there was a voice come out of heaven that called my name. 
and praise God saved my unworthy soul. Yeah, yeah. And the truth moved into my soul. Right. And I don't care if you can't read those, your own name, praise God. You know the difference between the truth and a lie. Yeah. Yes. The Bible said He put in you a well of water springing up into everlasting life. And the Bible said that out of your bellies will flow rivers of living water. You know what that water is? Holy Spirit. Ephesians told it. He said the cleansing by the water, which is the Word of God. Yeah. Right here it is. Yeah. It's on the inside of here. You know whether it's right or not. Yeah, the problem is people won't admit they're wrong. Yeah. Because of pride. There's preachers in this country right now, preachers in Ice County, that know that they're preaching lies. Yeah. That know that what they're teaching and preaching is going to cause people to die and go to hell. And somebody, a man, listens. They know it, but they can't admit it because they've done it for so long. If they admit it, they're going to have to admit to the congregation before everybody that they were wrong. Come on. And anything that will change you to go to hell is wrong. You better be right for the Lord God. According to the Word of God. Amen. Back that up too, brother. Yeah. There's a whole lot of people that's innocent in what they believe, and they truly believe that they're doing their best. Amen. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. And they're taking somebody's word for it instead of reading it for themselves. Amen. Come on. Yeah, amen. I thank God for the truth. Yeah. Amen. You know what the truth is? It's not what I believe. It's not what you believe or what you choose to believe. It's what thus saith the Word of God. Come on. When the Bible says it's sin and you go twisting it around for your own lifestyle, praise God, you're the one that's wrong. If you prayed about something and the answer that you got goes right against God, this is what I tell people. I, 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 I deal with people all the time. All the time. Not just a few minutes a day, but all the time. All night long, all day long. Seven days a week, I deal with people's problems. But this is what I tell them. If you're praying for an answer, and that answer goes totally against the Word of God, you've got your answer from the devil. Yeah. Because God will not lead you into living somewhere outside the Word of God. Can I get an amen? amen? You can know that the answer to God is either from a flesh or of the devil because it don't correspond with the Word of God. God won't lead you astray. Amen. amen. They'll say, well, praise God. I prayed about it. The Lord said He's okay. I said, you're a liar. They say, how do you know what God said? Because I said, I've got it in my hand. Amen. Right here it is. You tell me anybody that God's ever told anything that wasn't in this book. Come on, people. So I don't know, preacher. I, I got an ancient don't go. You got it from a wrong person. You won't change my mind. Come on. Think about it. That's right. The Bible, that brings confusion and the Bible said that God is not the author of confusion. So who is? If it ain't God, who is it? To them. We get ourselves in a lot of mess sometimes because we do not. And, that, and this is what's got me in the last little while really burned my bones. People say, well, it... It's a little wrong, but not all the time. How can you say that? Yeah. That's when the Bible said to beware of the leveling of the Pharisee. Yeah. For a little leveling leveled the whole lot. Yeah. How can you say a little of this teaching ain't wrong? How can you say that a little of it won't hurt people? When the Bible said a little of it will ruin the whole thing, praise God. Right. And he ain't talking about just me and you. He's talking about the whole congregation. Yeah. Praise God. That's right. That one person that's leading that church is leading everybody either to heaven or hell. Right. Right. It's right. what I preach and tell people all the time. Mom and dads, 
You're teaching your kids, amen, either to live like hell or to go to heaven. Yeah. And if you're teaching them to go to heaven, then you're standing against everything in this world that is wrong. Amen. Yes. Anybody know what I'm preaching? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Come on. My youngins wasn't like everybody else. They're both here today. Praise God, I can tell you. When they wanted to go trick-or-treating, they didn't get to go trick-or-treating. Bless the Lord. And I'll tell you why. The Bible said, amen, praise God, to give no place to the devil. And amen, he teaches me to shun the very appearance of evil. Yeah. Bless you. People go, do you get mad at me? I don't know why this is coming, but Bless you better you, get ready. <laughs> amen, people go to church every Sunday morning and say, I love Jesus, and then dress their kids up as witches, amen, and demons, put little horns on their heads, and it might say you're a little devil. Praise God, you better wake up, honey, because you give place to the devil. And amen, somebody's going to have to stand and give it a count. Amen. Amen. So that everybody else is a doing it. Come on, mom and dads. Teach them about the Easter Bunny and Santa Claus. And there ain't no such thing. Amen. And then when they get a little older and they figure out, praise God, Santa Claus is just something somebody made up. They figure Jesus is the same way because of the way mom and dad live in front of them. Bless you, I'll hear, I'm here to tell you right now that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my house. Amen. He's a rock of my salvation. He's my all in all. Amen. And praise God. Amen. He just is real in my living room. Sister Gail, as he is behind this pulpit on Sunday morning. Amen. Come on now. How real is he? That's a problem, Buck. Everybody loves Jesus two hours a week. And then the rest of the time, hey man, it's just hit me a sear anywhere you want to do. Anything goes. Hey Amen. We need to make our mind up, praise God. But everybody wants the preacher to live perfect. The deacons to live perfect. And then everybody else just flip-flop any which way. It don't work that way because you're going to give them a camp. Amen. Amen. The Bible said to study, to show yourself approved, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. You ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't fit against this thing, Brother Jim, to the shedding of blood, but it's a coming. You ain't got your mouth busted, praise God, yet for telling people the truth, but it's a coming. And I'll tell you how I know, because the Bible said it. Praise God, brother, people's going to hate you before you even speak, amen, because of the life you're living. Come on, I'm telling you the truth. But it'll come to the time, praise God, that you'll wish you'd live for Jesus. The most important thing you can do is live in front of these babies till they know the truth. Come on. I ain't always been locked by mine, but mine knows, praise God, where I stand when it comes to Jesus. Amen. They get to do everything everybody else done. Come on. We need to really get down to business for this thing. Contend. A contender. I like that. I like, I like your definition. Amen. Yeah. Praise God, I'm going to tell you right now, I never stood up nose to nose with nobody that I didn't think I was going to lose when I stood up. That's right. Yeah. Matter of fact, praise God, my sisters learned me to fight and praise God, I fit the win. Come on. Yeah, I promise you, when they jumped on you, they didn't intend to lose. Come on. Yeah. It's amazing to me, but when we go into the things of God, we'll just go in with our head home down and just like we're going to lose the Bible to start with, Brother Gary. I ain't losing. Amen. I'll preach on it here in a minute, praise God. I'm a witness. I'll let us go in here. I'm going to wish you all. Love of mine. You read about it. Yes. Amen. Amen. 
stirred about, never form a doctrine on that. People believe anything. Anything. I tell you what people believe, they believe what the crowd believes. The crowd that they're running with, that's what they believe. We used to meet one time, went to help a fellow out, me and Marty and, and Brother Buck and some of us went and we was going to really help them out. My God, what a mess we got into. Amen. We was the only ones there that knowed what the feller said. And everybody else was hooping and a hollering and amen. And you know the scary part about it is? That man has stood in every church in Ash County and sung and preached in most of them. And that man stood right in the pulpit and I knew that we was in trouble the first thing he said. He said that he'd been in this thing so long that you could give him one verse and he'd make you a message, a script, a, 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 a message out of it. And I thought, uh-oh. He saw a liquor too and this is what he said. He said that one day after a while the Lord was coming and everybody in the world would think that the aliens come and got us. And you know everybody in that place hollered amen, including the preachers. And me and Brother Buck and Barney, I looked at Buck, and I, we looked at Barney, and Barney's my, you ever see Barney? His mouth flew open, and I looked back at Buck, and I thought, praise God, did I just hear what I thought I heard, amen. He done got out of the gospel and got science fiction. Can I get an amen? Honey, I want to tell you something. By the authority of God's book, amen, morning. They ain't no spaceship coming to get me. And when Jesus comes, every eye will see, every knee will bow, and every tongue will confess that He is the Lord Lord. And I tell you, King, there'll be no mistake. They won't think nothing else going to sit their down. Praise God, they'll know we laugh in the clouds. Amen. A bunch of junk. Amen. <laughs> what am I what I was so dumbfounded about is old preachers, amen. Yeah. I thought, my God, I must have missed something somewhere. But I won't go back. And I can give you some good advice. It'll help you through this and I'm on her. <laughs> I give you youngest some advice. I'll give you all some advice. Amen. Be steadfast before you go visiting these other places. Amen. Boy, I tell you, I prayed for your brother. I prayed for him. Young preachers tell me, praise God, while he's in the hospital having this baby, praise God, he's talking. He said he went to the church, him and his family. Said the preacher got up and said he'd done pretty good for a minute. Said he said, I'm not going to offend, don't want to offend anybody. But he jerked open a new revised version Bible and said he's going to read out of that. And he said he got up, got his family, his kids, and he left. Amen. Yeah. Hey, Amen. Yeah. I respect that man and got confidence in him and I'll tell you why. Because he had enough backbone not to let his children sit and under that doctrine. Can I get an amen? Somebody ought to hold an amen. If you don't care about yourself, at least love your children enough to feed them the truth. Everybody worried about what you're going to feed your youngins, amen. Too much sugar will rot their teeth out. Too much Mountain Dew will make them hyper. Come on. And the combination of chocolate and Mountain Dew is devastating. <laughs> we worry more about what we put in their body than what we put in their mind. Can I get an amen? Come on. And I've got news for you. You know what's going to happen, Casey? When we stand before God, you will give an account for what you've taught Tori. What you let her little ears hear and her eyes are seen, praise God, you will give an account of what that young has heard. The truth hurts sometimes. Don't you know the truth even hurts a preacher sometimes? Amen. For this is what the Bible says. 
This ain't one of them sermons you do as I what I say, not as I do. The Bible said if you're going to preach the gospel, you got to live the gospel. Come on. I'm going to hug. I didn't even get started. I thought for sure I was going to make it through the day. Not to say anything, but I'll tell you right now. I love the Lord. Amen. I believe His Word. And I believe it's true this morning. I, I believe that, Brother Buck, with all my heart. I'm going to love it. You'll find out, praise God, when you hear everything said and done. It's amazing how people go against the Word of God and don't even realize what they're doing. Amen, because everybody's leading them that way. I thank God for a place of praise and, and it's living for God, brother. And know better than some of this stuff. Amen. It's just amazing to me. I'm going to hug. I'm going to wrap this thing. You got anything in? Unless somebody else got something to say. 525. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away to
said if anyone needs wood they can come to his house and cut trees and stuff to get wood. So we might need some need wood. Uh, service next Sunday will be over at David's house. Any birthdays and anniversary since the last time we was here? Emma's got a birthday.
came by, got a song. Dad. Dad. All right, you pray. It's clock month this morning. Uh, I'd like to say this. I, I thank God for this church. I thank God for God's people. And uh, some of you may not know what Mitchell's talking about. We have a riding three day of preaching and singing at my house this coming weekend, Labor Day weekend. And usually on Sunday morning we have meeting there at the barn. And I know everybody can't come, and, and I know everybody, you know, that ain't your thing or whatever it is. And, but everybody's well. You don't have to have a horse. You don't have to be horse related. You can come and be with us. We'll be eating on Saturday evening, probably about five o'clock. Brian's not here, but he'll be doing the cooking. And uh, it's just the fellowship and, and the win people to the Lord. And that's our main goal in life is just to win somebody to Jesus. But everybody's welcome. You don't have to have an invitation. I don't send out invitations. I don't make phone calls. I figure if you know me, you know everybody's welcome at my house. But for those that don't, you know, that it's not going to come or don't want to come, and, and it's been on my mind since last year, if, if uh, some of you want to have church here at uh, this church, I know Brother Joe, Brother Thomas, some of these other preachers, they'll come and preach, amen. You just let these men know, and, and they'll be here, I promise you. Uh, they know you stop stopping the service here just because I'm not going to be here. Uh, this is what we've done. God placed it on our heart. This will be the 12th year, Sister Gail. And they've been so saved at our house and in our barn. And I know God's moving in it. And uh, So I'm not going to stop till God tells me to stop. So if you feel like you need to be at this church, then you come on down here and we'll be praying for you. And amen. And you pray for us. And that's what it's all about. If God tells Brother Joe and some of these other preachers to come here and preach, then praise God that he'll have somebody here that needs it, Joe. So you just think about that. I, I'm not asking you to close service down. And uh, sometimes I, I think that that just gives people an opportunity not, not to even go to church. <laughs> Uh, I believe if you're not here, you ought to be at church somewhere. But you pray for us this morning, God be in our help. We sat down this morning, and the scripture just went to flood in our mind, flood in our soul, and, and uh, it, uh, it, it's unreal what God shows sometimes. And uh, but, but like I said, you pray hard this morning. I, I just want to be about God's business. And, and I, I thought and I've heard that several times this morning about the end and about the things that's are coming and about things and um, I thought about this thing and, and I, I'm going to tell you something this morning God being my helper I, I don't even feel worthy to even stand here this morning but God said to, to read this and, and I've got several places to read I, before I go and, and I, I want you to go over the revelations and I want you to mark this place because I'm going to eventually get to this before I sit down, God being my helper. Hey Amen. It all come together this morning, come to my mind. And if you will, go over to Revelation, amen, chapter 20, amen, and just mark that and hold your finger there until I get to it, amen. And you'll understand why I'm going to pray, amen, in just a few minutes. People don't understand, amen, just exactly what it takes to be saved. And I, I'm going to preach this a little bit, and... God being my helper, and, and, and this is what you must believe to be saved. And if you are saved this morning by the grace of God, you had to believe this, Brad. Amen. Without a shadow of a doubt, you have to believe this or it won't work. Can I get an amen? amen? You may have heard it. You may have heard people talk about it. You've heard the stories of it at Easter's, brother. Amen. But pray be unto God it has to be real in your life or it won't be any effect. Amen, Brother Robert. I want to read this. Praise God, Brother Jack. And amen. Praise God. Amen. One evening now. Amen, Lord. Have mercy. I get excited. I can't hardly stand it. But this is what you must believe in order to be saved. And praise God, amen, as the brother already said it, if you believe it, you'll be living by it, 
Amen. There'll be evidence in your life that you've come to the knowledge of the truth and you've accepted that and you believe it with your heart to the saving of your soul. Now this is what the Bible said and I'm going to preach on because one day after a while in the near future, amen, in just a few more days, you're going to be glad that you heard the gospel that was preached by an old man of God and you believed it to the saving of your soul. Can I get an amen? amen. Praise God, you'll be glad that somebody told you the truth and believed something that the brother was teaching that is steadfast and immovable, amen. That's right. Praise God. The Bible said, amen, first, I want to read to you over in the book of Romans, amen, chapter 10, very familiar scripture, and I'm going to read and preach just a minute, and then I want to read to you what thus saith the Word of God in the book of Revelation, amen. Pray be unto God, I want you to listen to me. The Bible said, amen, above all, and amen, I don't tell people to take my word for it, I'm going to tell you tonight, this morning, you get you an old King James Bible, and and you read it for yourself. Amen. And then you'll know if I'm telling you the truth or not. Can I get an amen? amen. Somebody holler amen. amen. Praise God. Woo! That's right. Boy, I feel God. I love Him. Amen. Yeah. The Bible said, Amen. Praise be unto God. Now, in Romans 10, Amen, down about verse 8, I want to read just a few verses and then I'm going I'm to... I'm going to slow down just a minute. You don't care, do you? <laughs> We've been getting out a little too early anyway. <laughs> Somebody said the other day that boy they had a long service. Got out something to play <laughs> I thought, Lord have mercy. You know you should get excited now. This is where I like to be in the house of God. Romans 10, verse 8. The Bible said, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and, and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Are you hearing me? You done got it in there if you just use it. The Bible said that if, if, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Did you hear what I said? If thou wilt confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God hath raised Him from the dead, He said thou shalt be saved. Can I get an amen. amen. Now, oh Lord God, hallelujah. The Bible said, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now I'm going to preach just a minute and then I'm going to Revelation. The Bible spoke about a man his name was Jesus. Amen. The Bible spoke about him being born in Bethlehem as a babe, wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. The Bible spoke Spoke about a young man, a uh, uh, name Jesus, a uh, uh, teaching in the synagogues, a uh, uh, valley father in glory. Uh, the scriptures read about a young man, a uh, uh, name Jesus, a uh, uh, carried a cross, a uh, uh, man to hang the sins of the world, a uh, uh, man on Calvary Mountain. Uh, the scriptures read about a man, a uh, uh, called Jesus, a uh, uh, hung between the heavens and the earth, uh, and gave up his life. And shed his blood for a lost group of people just like me. 
Then old day Lyles will never die. Amen. Yeah. So you're going to leave this world just like everybody else? No, I ain't leaving just like everybody else. <laughs> you say whatever you want to. You can believe whatever you want to. But praise God, I'm believing in Jesus Christ. And it ain't like everybody else. Amen. Amen. I'm the one to leave it like that. Praise God. Let me believe what I'm a preaching. Amen, Jack. Praise be unto God, you listen to me. Hey man, listen, I ain't going to die. I'm going to leave this body, but I'm not going to be dead. See, everybody thinks, hey man, when the body lays down, praise God, that's the end, that's not the end. That's just the beginning for them that believe, hey man. Can I get them, hey man? The Bible said, I'll never die, but I'll live forever according to the Word of God. Hey man, it don't have to be in this world, but I'm going to live, hey man, on the other side, praise God. Praise God. Can you believe what I just said? Amen. Amen. I've got scripture, it's real. Jesus is not dead, he's alive. Amen. Amen. He told them, he told them over there, amen, in the garden, praise God, they proceeded to be a gardener. 
Didn't know who he was till he spoke. And the Bible said never man spake like this man. But praise God, when he called their name, they knew who he was. When Moses started to throw their arms around him and he, they called it, he told them, said, touch me not. Don't touch me yet, for I'm not yet ascended to the Father. But he said, now you go to Galilee and tell the brethren that I'll meet them in Galilee, amen. And the Bible said a few days later, amen, that Jesus Christ appeared to them in the upper room, the doors and the windows were being shut, for they had fear of the Jews. But Jesus said, touch me, and see if I'm not flesh and blood, sat down and eat meat with them. And the Bible said he breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And praise God, them men and women yeah. were born again by the same Spirit yeah. that me and you of the day. Get up in the name of Hallelujah. They became alive. Glory to God. Praise God. I'll tell you why. Because they had to believe yeah. that He got up the third day because He saw. They saw Him. Yeah. They saw him die and they saw him get up. Amen. Don't you know the Bible speaks about us in that scripture he talked about? Yeah. Hey, hey, oh, that was old Thomas. Hey, so much you come here. He wasn't there. <laughs> but Thomas come back in a few days later and Jesus come yeah. back to see him. Because, yeah. hey, man, hey, man, let me tell you something. He's merciful to us, a sinner. Yeah. He could have left every one of us and let us yeah. die and go to hell. Yeah. But praise God, he chose to seek yeah. and to save that. Lost. He found you, picked you up, brought you in. Glory to God, you're saved this morning. By the grace of God, you're a shadow. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. Don't talk, talk, I'm not believe. Let's see for myself. He didn't believe, he didn't know whether to believe his bunch or not. He saw him die, saw him put him in the ground. And here they are, Tom Short sure been here. Oh, Lord, we got something. He breathed on us. Yeah. So I can't tell you how it happened. I don't feel the same, Thomas. Thomas said, I won't believe unless I see it for myself. And Jesus came back and said, touch me. Yeah. You know the funny thing is, hey, the strangest thing is, Thomas didn't ever have to touch him. No, no, no. When he saw him, he fell down and began to cry, my Lord and my God. He said, blessed are thou, Thomas, for thou hast seen and believed. But he said, blessed are they which have not seen, but have believed. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank yeah. Knowledge will come in handy when you need it, amen. amen. Can I get the brother talking about it? When people try to cross you up and make you down, amen. Knowledge will come in handy on that day. For you've got something solid to stand on. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Praise God, I'm going to preach a little. Revelation 20, I want to read it to you. I may not even say a word, but I, I'm going to pray. Amen. You see, well, I just read you, but it's going to come in handy. Well, I just read to you, sister, saved your life more than any time. Huh? You can't die to God if He's done you. Hey, man, look at the side of you. Prayers, ain't it? Look at these babies right here. Prayers, ain't it? Huh? Been awaiting on it, brother. You have no idea what God's doing for you. You'll never know when God gets done. But what I just preach to you will come in handy. Amen. It'll bring in children to the truth. Amen. Can I get them? Amen. Hey, come on. I'm about to fly. Praise God. My God is going to take care of his children till the last day. And in the last day, sister, amen, you're going to be glad you believe what the preacher preached. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. The day of coming won't be so good. 
for them that don't believe. The Bible says they may open the book of Joel. He prophesied a day, about a day, I mean, about a great and a terrible day of the Lord. It's going to be a great day. They used to sing an old song back years ago when I first got to church about a great day of coming. A great day of coming. The Bible speaks about a great and a terrible day. It's going to be a great day for those that have believed that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Amen. That God raised him from the dead. Not he just did it. Hey, the Bible don't say that Jesus just got up. The Bible said God raised him from the dead. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I'm going to be glad for this, brother. You see, I ain't afraid when this comes because I believe the first part. I believe it to the place. Rex said, I don't have to worry about the end because I know what He's going to do for me. Amen. Can I get anybody confident enough to know that? Amen. Come on, have you read the book? Praise God, the Sunday school teacher. I'm going to tell you. Amen. The Bible said in the 20th chapter, I might read the whole chapter. Amen. I don't know, but this come to my mind. I don't know what you believe. Don't make a hill of beans to me. I'm sort of like Jerry about his Ford truck. Amen. Amen. Praise God, you won't convince me when I, when I like something or I want something. You ain't going to change my mind about it. Amen. The only one going to change my mind is God. Can I get an amen? amen? What you believe does not affect me at all because you know why? I carry the book and I know what it says. Can I get an amen? And I know, Robbie Hart, that praise God, the moment that I believe in my heart and confess the Lord to you, I couldn't hardly wait. Amen. You say, I've never told nobody about being saved. Maybe you don't open your mouth and tell somebody. Amen. The Bible said, Amen. With the mouth confession is made in the salvation. With the heart man believeth from the righteous. Can I get an amen? Amen. Amen. If you get bigger famous God in you, he'll bust out somewhere. Amen. <laughs> Afraid to testify, that's a, God will bring it out. When, once God begins to move, you won't have huh? God will put you in a place where people will try to force you into something and all at once you'll have to tell them. So I can't do that. I'm saved. Amen. Amen. They may not understand. They said, I don't want to do that no more. I'm saved. Amen. I don't want to be a part of that no more. I got right with God. Amen. 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 Say, God touched me and I'm okay with Him. I believe I'll stay there. Can I get a name? Amen. Anybody know what I'm talking Amen. about? Amen. I got saved on Friday night. And I'm going to read this. I got saved on Friday night, Brother Ronnie, and the Saturday, amen. There's no boy I used to drink beer and liquor with all the time. Every weekend, he was at my house. That Saturday with a case of beer that sat on the hood of my car and he said, get you one. I said, no, I don't want one. He said, you got drunk last night and you're sick this morning. He said, get you one, it'll help you. That's a killer cure for a drunk. You know that. Get drunk, your head's a bust, you're throwing up blood, and their cure is, get you another and it'll make you feel better. And all that does is numb your brain, amen, till the next day and it's twice as bad as it was the day before. Can I get anybody know what I'm preaching? Amen. My God, I'm telling you the truth. But that old boy kept saying, get you one. I told him, I said, no, I don't want one. He looked at me and he said, what's the matter with you? I said, well, it is to tell you, I got saved last night. Jesus Christ saved my soul, amen. Woo, glory to God. And that boy laughed at me. And this is what he said. He said, how long will that last? Well, I told him this. I don't know much about it. But I said, according to that man that preached last night, what I got last night will last me beyond when the Lord comes. And That's been 20 some years ago. <laughs> what do you believe, Mr. Knock? Praise God, it's better today than it was that day. The closer I walk, the more I read, the more my face increased. Praise God. He just gets better every day. I ain't always been perfect. 
Me and little Kyle, we had a conversation about that yesterday. Hey, man. Hey, you only like to tickle me too today. <laughs> hey, man. We tried to get her to ride the horse there yesterday. She didn't understand. They tell her to pull, she pull one way or the other too hard or not enough. And as you get back to her, hey, man, and she told me, she said, Preacher, she said I was a trying. She said, nobody's perfect. I'm just a little kid. <laughs> Amen? Come on! That baby spoke more truth, man, yesterday than most adults ever did. And you know what she said? Some people think they're perfect, but they're not. She said, none of us is perfect. She said, the only one is perfect is the Lord Jesus. And I get it, amen. Come on, praise God. You're going to fail and come short, but God's still God, and He still knows what you do. Amen. I gotta read you this. I gotta read you this. You see, I ain't always been what I should have been, but God's been everything He said He was. People make fun of you for living for Jesus, but this when this day comes, I promise you that you'll be glad you believe. This day is what I'm looking for. The Bible said. The Bible said in the 20th chapter, and he said, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having a key to the bottomless pit in a great chain in his hand. And he laid hand on the dragon, that old serpent, which, amen, which, shoot, which is, it, is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should, should deceive the nation no more, till a thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded, for the witnesses of Jesus, for and for the word of God and which had not worshipped the beast neither his image neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years but the rest a man of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished These, this is the first resurrection amen now I'm going to preach just a minute I ain't going to get in a whole lot of humbo jumbo, but the Bible said, amen, he that had the near let him hear. Amen, he began to speak. And he said, amen, to remember this, that a thousand years with the Lord. Amen. amen, this is one day. Amen, the Bible said a thousand years is one day, and one day is a thousand years with the Lord. Amen. These that were beheaded, amen, for Christ's sake, died on the law, amen. And amen, they were in the law in this prison, amen, until one day that something happened. Now, the Bible said that there was a man called Jesus amen. died on the cross of Calvary and went into the heart of the earth for three days. Amen. amen. What people don't understand, Brad, is that Jesus didn't just go lay in the tomb, but the Bible said he went into the heart of the earth. And you know what he done? Brother Keith, he went in and said the I was locked up in that prison. Hey boy, got up and come out. Can I get an amen? The Bible said. Now get a hold of this. The Bible said that when Jesus Christ come out of the ground, that the graves of the saints burst open. And the saints come out and showed themselves in the city, amen. Yeah. Yeah. Now the Bible just said that this is the first resurrection. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So when Jesus came out of the ground and the saints come out with Him, right. according to the Word of God, what I just read to you, this is the first resurrection. Right. Can I get anybody believe what I just read to you? What I just preached to you? Now listen, it's going to get good. If you believe that, then the next verse is for you. Can I get an amen? The Bible said amen. This is the first resurrection. He goes on as you're talking. I'm going to read this so you'll get a picture. The Bible said amen. Go, Lord. He said, blessed in verse 6, blessed and holy is he that had part in the first resurrection. For on such the second death had no power. Can I 
get an amen. 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 You see, when you believe, then you've got part in the first resurrection. You see, when this day comes, nothing else is going to matter. What kind of house you live in, what kind of clothes you wear, what kind of vehicle you ride, what kind of bicycle you pedal, it's not going to make a hill of it. If you've got a million dollars in the bank, it won't make no difference. Amen. But what's going to matter when this day comes is if you had part in the first resurrection, when Jesus Christ got up and brought the saints with Him, if you believe that, then praise God Amen. The Bible said, Blessed and holy is he that had a part in the first resurrection. On such the second death had no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. Amen. Gog and Magog together. That took with Gog and Magog together them together to battle and the, the number of, of whom is as the sand of the sea and they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about that be, and the beloved city and the fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophets are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever and I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away and there was found no place for them and I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books were opened and another book was opened which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works and the sea gave up the dead which was in it, and the death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to the works, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Thanks be to God. The moment I believed in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, my was recorded in heaven in the Lamb's book of life. I'll never face a second death. I'll come through fire proof. Amen. 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 You see, believing in the resurrection is going to keep you out of fire. Amen. 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 Say, don't you dread it, preacher? No, I'm going to be on the right side. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man. With the sheep. Yeah. You know, the Bible says He's going to bring His saints back with Him to execute judgment upon this wicked and adulterous generation. So I don't know, preacher, read it for yourself. Because I believe. Now this is what the Bible says. The Bible says I'm an overcomer. Not just over death, but of the whole world. I'm an overcomer. We're defeated because we let things defeat us. Amen. Amen. The Bible said who in 1 John chapter 5, verse 5, He said, Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus Christ he is the Son of God. Amen. I think about these babies. I, I get so excited I can't understand it because I know what God's doing in your girl's life. In all these girls' lives. But when these new babies come along, praise God, and I get to thinking about what God's going to do. Amen. Amen. And then it's to come what God's going to do for them. Come on. And what God's going to do in the near future. What God's got in store for them. What God's got in store for these youngs. 
I can remember when Brandon was this size, and this one was almost this size, and that was a little bitty. Gotta give an amen. Now we're young men. Come on. You'll look around, Mom and Dad, and your kids will be grown. I look at mine and I think they're still this size. Yeah. yeah. And they remind me every day that they're not. Yeah. I can't help if they're still my babies. Well, let me tell you something. When this day comes, the only thing that's going to matter is you believe. And that will get you through the fire. Say, preacher, you've lost your mind. I just read it to you. Right out of the Word of God. This may not have been shouting me. Bless him, Lord. It ought to be. Yeah. It ought to be. The Bible teaches me not to get my tent stakes too deep. Meaning not to get entangled with the world, amen, but where you won't want to leave it when the Lord comes. Yeah. Sometimes I just like to get rid of it anyway. Man. I used to get real tore up, something break, I'd fall my deep. I'd beat stuff with hammers, throw a pit for days, throw stuff in the barn, <laughs> slam stuff. <laughs> we was rushing around yesterday, trying to move, move a big manure pile out the house. Had two tractors of gold and I loaded it way too heavy, Jeff. I thought about it, they man, after I done it. The chain couldn't pull it through the spreader and they man broke the chain. And the other time I was so mad, I just drove it back to the house and on the hook it hooked my bucket to it, Joe, and I just flipped the whole thing over and praise God, amen, just dumped it out. Took the spreader, put it behind another barn and just walked off and left it. I took my bucket off my tractor, I scooped it up. I just piled it up over here. <laughs> manure is manure, don't matter where it's at. <laughs> but I moved it before I walked. Can I get that man? Why get excited? That didn't hinder me a bit from being saved. I still got the big Huh? The outcome is the same. I got it moving. Amen. Let me tell you something, praise God. Don't get caught up in the things of this world. Yeah. Just keep living for Jesus. Amen. And one day after a while, the Lord's are coming. The trumpet's going to sound. And when you face the th great white throne, you're going to be glad that you believe. You're going to be glad the blood has been applied. Because when He calls our name, Gary, He's going to bring you in. He said, come over here and sit down. So, Buck, come on over, Gary. Sit down. Come on over on the right. There may be somebody there with you. said, no, you can come over here. You go over here. They're going to be a separate today. Yeah. Hey. All of us on the right hand of God are going to be glad that they believe the gospel. I love you this morning. I'm going to hush. Been busy. World's getting busy. Amen. You pray for us. I pray that God would save a multitude of people this week. I pray heaven would come and God would anoint that place that God could get, just see souls saved, Joe. That's my goal in life, brother. You know it is. Can't be there. Pray for us. If you can, we'll come and have a meeting. Pray for one another this week. Pray for one another this week. And as far as I know, we'll be here Wednesday night. So just come on back Wednesday night.
continue to pray for one another. Help one another. Make a difference. And as the brother said, read this book so when people do try to cross you up, just say, no, right here it is. I can give you some advice. Carry your Bible with you. Study it, know it, and then praise God if they want to know something. Open the book up and say, right here, you read this. Don't take what I've got to say. You read this. And here it is. I love you, church. I hope somebody got something out of this today. Get you something. Amen. But get you something. You can Gary get you a song. Gary, get him a song. <laughs> Just soon Buck gets you a song and tell us you can. Thank you.